welcome back to Moby Studio and today I'm here um, for a video I know you guys are going to enjoy. I'm basically going to be doing like a pre um, review kind of uh, into Dark Moby Kid Hot Mess. Um, I'm looking forward to this because I love Dark Moby Kid. Um, granted the latest books have not been my favorites but I still love the series overall. Um, so I think this will be a good chance for me to kind of talk about what I want to see from this book, how I think the series can improve, um, and, and different criticisms I have from the past two to kind of give context as to how I feel these types of ways about the series. Um, so really I've had an issue with the series starting with the deep end is with, I think where the series kind of started to go off into the wrong track. Um, just, I thought that whole story was just so unrealistic and, it was just crazy, and to, everything was to the extreme at different points, even worse than the long call. Like, the long call, sure, it, it, was, a little, it was a little bit more grounded, I would say, than the deep end. The deep end was just flat-out crazy, um, and I think for younger kids, I think they would really enjoy that, but for me, I didn't really care, um, and I think part of the, the problem with with the series is that it's kind of going into the direction of geared towards younger kids, like elementary kids again, rather than some middle school. Like I would say this is even more geared towards the middle to younger elementary at this point. Just some of the things that are happening in these books, specifically the deep end with just how crazy it is. To me, it felt, it feels like, yeah, this is like a book for elementary, the younger end of it. So for me reading it, I was like, an eighth grader at the time it wasn't my cup of tea um but no um big shot was okay um i liked it better than the deep end i still it still wasn't my favorite because i felt like there was a missed opportunity to have like greg and rally on the same basketball team and they just didn't do anything with that um i thought it was interesting how they had the mom be the coach and i liked how greg actually had to learn something by playing basketball However, I didn't feel like he really deserved that win at the end because I kind of expected it. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, it wasn't my favorite book, but it was a step up from The Deep End. So I really love Diaper Overload, and that was because it was a Roderick book. Um, and he's my favorite character. I like him a lot better than Greg. He's just such like a fun and entertaining character. He's not particularly a good person, but he's also like a young adult who's just trying to figure out his own shit. So I, I really um, like that book. Now, I, I think... There's a point to be had when with um that it was not Greg focused at all and it was just Greg talking about Roderick and his band. I mean, I think that's what the book was about. And I do kind of get the frustration with that. I mean, like why not have Greg involved in it more instead of him just telling the story about Roderick and his band? To me, I felt like that book would have been better as like a Roderick um spin-off book or something, which I still really wish Jeff Kenny would do you know, he's kind of started with the rally books, and I really hope he writes more of those. Um, but I think a Roderick spinoff series would be a lot of fun if he ended up doing that. And to me, it kind of felt like Diaper Overload could be like a backdoor pilot. Um, I know that's like a TV show expression, but like a backdoor pilot for um, um, a Roderick series. So I, I kind of hope he does stuff with that in that realm. Um, but to be honest, um, that was a great book. Like, I think that was my favorite since Wrecking Ball. Um, and I really liked Wrecking Ball. In fact, I think I liked Diaper Overload better than that. It might have been my favorite since, like, the original, like, old school, which I really liked. Um, I really liked Diaper Overload a lot. Um, no Brainer was probably my least favorite book of the entire, um, series. Like, all 18 books, it was probably my least favorite. And the reason for that is just because it was just, there's no weaving plot. I mean, I guess you can say, like, it the the thing that weaved all the way through was the fact that the school was low on money, um, but to me, I didn't really care, like, be because to me, it was just, everything was so extreme and, like, so unrealistic. Like, there was one part, and then now this was a funny part, when, when they, um, when it was revealed, um, or something, they, uh, the old principal hid money somewhere, and they think it's hidden in the walls, so kids come in and tear down their lockers with an axe and then they create a passageway and it's between Greg's locker and another kid's locker and then these kids just walk from one lock like they're between the lockers to create a shortcut and they start charging people to use it that that was actually hilarious and that might go down as one of my like the funniest moments in the whole franchise to me just the pure ridiculousness of it um 
but no, I mean, and there were some funny moments throughout, I, I, I thought, um, but to me, I, I just wasn't a fan of, um, how extreme things got and introducing the fact that the old principal was like, ended up in jail. To me, it just wasn't needed at all. And it's not like a, oh, drama. No, I just, I didn't need a whole book about that. I just didn't. And I just didn't care. And the fact that, um, the, the, the plot on the back was a total mislead, um, because it says Greg realizes he's going to be sent to a different school than his best friend, Rally. Like, they could have written a whole entire thing about, um, Greg and Rally and their friendship moving forward now that they're going to different schools and, like, conflict there. Maybe, like, they join different sports teams. Like, to me, I don't know, there, there could have been, like, actual, like, good storyline there, but instead of they rushed at the very end, um, they had them go to different schools, they had Greg get a girlfriend, and, and everything, and I just wasn't really a fan of all that rush together, like, we waited 18 books for Greg to get a girlfriend, and it lasted 10 pages, like, what the heck, um, and there, Rally was, Rally was in this book the most since Wrecking Ball, but even so, he was in, like, four pages, and the rest of the family wasn't really relevant at all, um, so, to me, no-brainer was just a disappointment, um, so basically going into hot mess it looks like it's going to be a family focused book it looks like it's going to be a summer trip but not like a road trip thankfully we do not need any more road trip books i'm telling you i think the deep end exhausted that um but basically we're going to be getting all of greg's family in a beach house for the summer and there's going to be kind of a, a mystery about the missing recipe for grandma's meatballs um, to me, I think this will actually be a really good book, um, from what I've seen so far, I'm really looking forward to it, because, you know, I think, um, Hard Luck, um, in particular, was very much focused on Greg's family, and that was an underrated book, in my opinion, I really enjoyed Hard Luck, because it kind of had Greg off on its own, and kind of doing some self-reflecting, based on stuff with Rally and all of that, and I think he actually kind of grew a little bit, but we also got a lot more into Greg's life, um, outside of just his immediate family, um, and outside of just Rally, too, um, so that's why it's, that's one of my favorite books, like, in my top five, Hard Luck is, I really like it, um, but I'm, I'm glad to be getting to see some of the family again, and I think there's a lot of potential for good storylines with them, um, and I think adding the kind of mystery in with the meatballs will be something fun and interesting, um, I mean, I think there will be over-the-top moments, because every book since, really wrecking ball when um the 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 thing came crashing into the house like that was that was i think where the unrealisticness started um and then it's kind of continued since then everything except diaper overload um which was more normal but no i think um i think this book i'm fine with some moments like that but i don't want it to be kind of dominating the entire book because I think that kind of brought some of these other books down. So if they can kind of remain, uh, keep some consistency throughout and make it a pretty normal story, I'm down. Um, you know, I, I do really like whenever Greg's family is involved. Um, and I think the more of that, the better. Um, so I think this book has a lot of potential. Um, it comes out Tuesday. So probably I'll get it out next Friday. Because what I like to do is I like to read it immediately after I get it, which I actually have something going on next Tuesday night, so I probably won't end up reading it till maybe Wednesday, because I, yeah, probably Wednesday. Um, and then I'll probably read it on Wednesday, maybe do an unboxing, I'll probably attach it to my YouTube review, um, and then go into Thursday record the review after I've had some time to process it, because I never like to do something right after I review it, unless I absolutely have to for time's sake. Um, I always like to sit on it for like a day or so, so I would say probably expect a review next Friday, a week from now, um, and then I'll, it'll be kind of like be an unboxing probably at the beginning. I might do a separate video, but to me, you'll probably just attach it all into one, and it will probably most likely, unless I'm having a really bad day and don't want to show my face, I'll do a face um, review for, um, for this because I don't do those very often and I like to do something special for the Wimpy Kid reviews because, you know, it's kind of me going back to my roots in a way and, and I do really like talking about Wimpy Kid in general because even though I had some problems with the most recent books, I still massively enjoy the franchise. Um, one other little update is that there's not going to be a Wimpy Kid animated movie 
this year, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I was looking forward to seeing whatever they would come up with next. Um, assume they would go back to the last straw. I know a lot of fans really want to see the last straw, especially because they skipped over that in the live action movies. To me, I didn't mind because I think the, c- combining the last straw and dog days into dog days was a really good choice. And I like that movie a lot. Um, and maybe the most out of the three. Uh, I don't know. I think that and Roderick, like that movie and Roderick Rules are pretty close together. I really like both of them. Um, it's kind of hard for me to choose which one's my favorite. Um, but I would like to see them do the last straw on its own. Um, now it looks like it won't be coming out in 2024. So I would assume 2025 sometime. Now to me, I feel like it would be kind of cool to have Dog Days be a summer movie. Um, so I could see them maybe dropping the last straw in, oh, I don't know, maybe um, the summer slash fall of next year. I don't know if they'll wait till December. Um Especially because I feel like to kind of spread out some release stuff, you know, have the books come out in the fall and then have other stuff come out earlier in the year uh, because it's kind of been pushed back to later in the year, especially when we don't have like a rally book, um, which we haven't had for a couple of years. Um, So to me, I would like maybe The Last Straw to come out either next summer or fall and then maybe have Dog Days come out the summer of 2026. Um, I would like if they kind of released it by season, so like for uh, the third wheel to kind of do like a Valentine's Day release would be kind of cool because it kind of fits into that vibe. And then, of course, the long haul has to be a summer release. And some of the other ones, it doesn't really matter. Um, um, You know, the Cabin Fever was obviously a Christmas one because that makes um, total sense. Um, But that's kind of all I have for this video. So comment down below what you thought of it. Um, I'll be back uh, next Friday for my review of Hot Mess, so I'll see you guys soon. Bye, everyone.